Yes. Uh, is here. Ryan Biggs is here. Helen Nye and Doug Shipman as members. Our town liaison, Chris Taylor and Hi. Mary Tebow are here. Welcome. And we have members of the public here. Jennifer Glick, Sandra Rhodes, uh, Sandra Rhodes, and Tricia uh, Giscombe. Did I say that correctly? Yes. Thank you. Awesome. So welcome, everybody. We're glad you're here. Um, the, the first agenda item is actually public comments. And it's an opportunity for anyone who is visiting the meeting to say anything that they would like to. Um, it, we often use it as a chance for people, even if they don't want to make a statement, just might like to introduce themselves and, and say something briefly about their connection to veterans or why they are here. So um, we'll open the floor if anybody would like to introduce themselves or, or make a statement. Um, I'm going to start. My name is Trisha Giscombe. I am a, a United States Navy veteran. I served from 1997 until 2003. I was a hospital corpsman. I um, moved, I'm originally from St. Lucia, moved to Hartford, grew up in Hartford, uh, then joined the military, then moved back and moved to Wethersfield. I have uh, two children. One is going to start her fresh, uh, no, a sophomore year in college. And I have a fifth grader in Charles Wright. My husband is also a Navy veteran. Um, and I am very interested in joining and getting more connected with the veterans in our community to see what my, what I could bring to our community veterans and how I could um, give any input that I may be able to give. Right now, I'm currently a registered nurse at Connecticut Children's Hospital. So, and I'm working from home now due to COVID, but otherwise, thank you for the invite. Great, thanks for being here today. Yeah. Thank you, Tricia. My name is Sandra Rhodes. I'm also a Navy veteran on uh, 93 to 98. I have four children, one that graduated Weathersfield High, two that are in Weathersfield High, and one still in um, elementary school. Um, I was a Navy CB for five years and then I moved back to Connecticut and we moved to Weathersfield about 16 years ago now. Um, and actually I got an email and that was the first I heard of this Veterans Commission and I'd love to be a member or an alternate, you know, very similar to Trisha, interested in helping our local veterans. Great. So thank you for the invitation. Yeah, thanks, thanks for joining us. Yep, thank you for your service. Thanks for joining. Thank you for joining. And I guess, <laughs> last but not least, um, my name is Jennifer Glick. Uh, I am a Vietnam vet, so I'm an old, uh, old vet <laughs> at this point. Older, uh, not old. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, I can't believe it. It was well, it was 50 years ago this year that I got to, that I arrived in Vietnam and, and I kept some journals of that time. So, and I've written poetry about it. So I go back to that sometimes. I think, oh my God, I'm still there. Um, time flies. But I, I was, uh, I volunteered for the Army Nurse Corps uh, back then. I, I was totally clueless about the war. I was not an activist, but I was interested in, um, you know, really enhancing my nursing skills and, and seeing another part of the world and helping out the troops. So spent a year, 70 to 71. So it was kind of the beginning of the end. Um, I'm a nurse and uh, a social worker. I, I recently retired from the Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services where I, I um, was in the commissioner's office. Uh, my position was director of older adult services. And because of my uh, veteran status, I've worked with veterans in a way. And I'd like to talk to you, Helen, about what you do at the, at the Rocky Hill home. 
Um, I've done a lot of work with nursing homes in particular. Um, I'm, part, I'm a member of the Veterans Writing Group, which is out of Russell Library in Middletown. We were going to do a reading at uh, the Weathersfield Library in May, and of course that got canceled. But we're starting up again tomorrow. We're going to be doing our writing group uh, virtually, uh, I guess, until if ever we're able to get together again. I'm also involved in some kayaking programs that serve veterans. Uh, if anybody's interested, there's a kayaking program in Middletown, and there's also one out of Mount Sinai off of Riverfront in Hartford. So, uh, so I'm doing a few things uh, with veterans, and uh, I really appreciate the invitation. I think I was at a meeting with the Hartford Foundation, um, and Amy Bello um, asked me if I was interested in the commission. I didn't know much about it. So I said, yeah, and uh, Helen has been communicating with me and I, I really appreciate uh, being invited to uh, attend a meeting. So thank you. Great, and thank you. Mm. And I, thank I see you. One other member of the public that's joined, uh, Tegan Willard, is that right? I mute your, I mute your button. If you would, uh, yep, you, if you'd like to introduce yourself and just say a little bit about why you're here with us tonight, uh, this is a great time uh, to do that. Sure, hi, my name is Tegan Willard. Uh, Ryan Biggs invited me to join as a fellow veteran. Um, I served in the United States Nurse Corps, um, active duty for four years after I graduated from Boston College. And then I spent um, six years in the reserves and a few years, er, and with a little bit of time in the inactive ready reserve. I'm a pediatric nurse. I work at Children's Hospital in Hartford. I work in the- Hi, Tegan. <laughs> hey, I promise you, I did not know that they knew each other. I promise you. I can't. Oh, hi. Um, so I, I've worked there in the rheumatology clinic for about nine years. Um, I have three boys. My husband's a pastor at First Church in Old Weathersfield. Um, so you've probably walked by there at least a few times mm -hmm. and been here for about 13 years. Right. That's me in a nutshell. Well, welcome. We're glad Thank you're here. And uh, thanks, Ryan, for reaching out and uh, Helen as well for following up. But uh, we won't tell you some of our methodology that led to you being contacted, but... <laughs> I think most of you responded to our veterans survey that we did back in the fall, mm -hmm. and uh, we were able to uh, define some interest on in some people. And if you didn't respond to that and came anyway by personal invitation, that's fantastic too. So um, thank you. Uh, why don't we go ahead and, and work through the minutes, and then we'll get into some of the other agenda items so we can move along. The um, is there a motion to accept the minutes of June 10th, 2020? Motion. Okay. I hear a motion from Ryan, seconded by Frank. Um, any discussion on the minutes? <clears throat> just gonna- I'm hoping not. <laughs> just, just gonna request that the, uh, that, uh, the Honorable Frank Senna's name uh, be oh. spelled S E N A rather yes. than C E N A. Sorry about that. That's all right. I get that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I am, Frank. <laughs> I am not related to the wrestler. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> all right. Good to go. All in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes are approved. Thank you. Okay, uh, we're on to letters and announcements. These actually usually come from the town staff liaisons. Um, any so letters or announcements? I, uh, based on our last meeting, I reached out to Fauna Eller at the um, assessor's office because we had a request whether or not we'd be able to use their database. Mm -hmm. And she said that's not a problem at all. Um, she can extract the info that we need into Excel, 
depending on what it is that we need and whenever we'd like it. So oh, kind, of a blank, nice. kind of a blanket, yes, you can. What do you need? Let me know when. So that was nice to know. Fantastic, thank you for that. I like that answer. <laughs> yeah, really, it always helped. The other, uh, I, I did get the updated uh, commission listing with all of you guys, updated uh, dates of service. And Kathy also did uh, want me to let you know that she did email Gary Evans to request a liaison from the council. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. okay. Hopefully someone that knows something about veterans affairs. I, um, I actually, so just to add on to that, I actually sent an email as well to Mayor Rell and asked him if anything has moved with that this morning. So I'm pretty sure they're, they're going to figure it out very soon. Good. Yeah, good. Good. And um, one of the things I noticed is under new business, but probably is old business. And since you're talking about uh, Kathy's actions already, Mary, do you know, uh, did Kathy submit our needs assessment report? Um, I actually have a little bit on that. Uh, no. Uh, and the reasoning is that. Um, we did talk about making a presentation to the council to talk about it. She thought that the best idea would be to give it to the council closer to when you're actually going to present so that it is fresh in their mind. Um, so her thought was to um, come up with a cover uh, for it to, you know, what is it that you're looking for from the council uh, and then um, to send it to the council with a, for a specific agenda for a specific meeting. They only meet once in August, but they do kind of get back to regular business in September where they will have two meetings. Um, so, you know, it's, it's kind of a matter of choosing which meeting you'd like to be put in and then um, it, it can be Put in as an agenda item with a presentation. Mm -hmm. so, makes sense. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Mary. That's that's You're good welcome. to know. Um, I think we also had talked about wanting to do it when the council was meeting in person, so that we could all all be there to, uh, you know, represent the commission as well. So yeah, I, I think it was. I think it's all being there would really just be a lot more impactful. Um, they yeah. could see us and we could see them and, you know, they could see how serious we are about the veterans in town and actually respond to it. Yeah. I was going to say, Mary, any idea when the council might start doing in-person meetings? I, I, you know, the, the whole town hall is open only by appointments. Uh, there are no meetings that are happening in person at this time. Mm -hmm. And I have not heard any plan to start that up. Okay. All right. Well, that'll give us a little bit of time to uh, to uh, work on a cover letter and, and a strategy. So that's good. Okay. Well, thank you. Any other letters and announcements? That's all I've got for you. No? Chris, anything? I, yes, yes, Doug. I know um, you can't see me, but I could hear you and hopefully you can hear me. <laughs> yes. Um, I wouldn't I wanted to say that I did receive some correspondence. This goes back to June from the State Department of Veteran Affairs, and they were saying that uh, they are reopening their residential programs and Patriots Landing program for regular admissions. And this came from uh, Thomas J. Soddy, the commissioner there. So they wanted to make sure that everyone is aware of it and. Um, you know that the DBA uh, has taken action with COVID pandemic by implementing broad infection control measures, uh, including establishing an on-site COVID-19 veteran recovery wing with regular screening and testing of veteran residents and staff. So there is information on this. If anyone's interested, I have phone number here, which is 860-616-3802. And you could also go to their website at www.portal.ct.gov slash DVA slash pages slash residential facility. I wanted to share that with you. 
And um, also quickly to say that there is an organization called the Penn Fen, C-E-N-F-E-D Foundation, and it maintains a list of financial resources that active duty service members and veterans are eligible for. And I don't know if anyone's ever heard of the Penn Fed Foundation, but they do um, COVID-19 emergency help. They also help disabled Americans. They also provide interest-free loans, and they also provide family and caregiver support. So that is available. And I wanted to add one more thing, which um, I think Doug and, and Ryan, I had sent to you and, and Mary on a BA town hall meeting that was um, that had taken place on July 1st. Mm -hmm. And this was hosted by Director Al Montega and Lieutenant Governor Susan Bysowitz and VA Commissioner Thomas Soddy. Um, and they, you know, I did listen to the um, meeting afterwards. It was about an hour long. It was very, very good. And they um, get, gave an update on the health system uh, situation there at the state VA. So if anyone's interested, I, I know that um, that information could be forwarded to you in email so you could view yeah. the video. I have nothing Chris, else to add. <laughs> Chris, thank you for, those are, I think, three important things. And I was wondering, <clears throat> would you mind just doing a little summary of each of those three things and including the link to the VA town hall meeting and just send it yes, to I'm all all the commissioners? Yes, I would be glad to. That'd mm -hmm. be great, thank you. I know you sent Ryan and I the, the VA and it came right before the July 4th holiday. So I apologize, I know it got lost in the sauce with me, so. Um, no problem, I'd be glad to you know, summarize everything and send the information to, you, to everyone there. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Great. Right, so um, I think that's it for letters and announcements. Before we start old and new business, I just wanted to say briefly, because we do have uh, three people here with us that have not been part of the process in the past. And, uh, no, four people, excuse four. me. Yeah, four. <laughs> wow, mm -hmm. I, I was a liberal arts guy. I never got math very well. <laughs> um, just to say a little bit about this commission. So- um, Those army guys. Right. The. Uh, I gotta take my boots off in order to count that high. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the Veterans Commission is not a commission like some in the town where you know people come and petition for approval for things and we sit in judgment and you know, like the Historic District Commission or TPZ, we're really kind of a working committee that tries to do things to support veterans. We are uh, very fortunate that we have an excellent town staff that work with us. And uh, we're also a very new commission, so we haven't really worked out all of the things that we will do. So uh, Chris Taylor is with our social services and elderly services. And then uh, Mary and uh, Kathy Bagley are with Parks and Rec. And so we have a relationship to both of those departments. It's very important to serving the veterans. And I think just scanning across other towns and seeing what they do, we have a, a comparatively a pretty well organized response to veterans needs. Um, and so I think as taxpayers, we should feel pretty good about that. Our role, I think as a commission is to try to figure out where are the gaps? What are things that veterans maybe need but aren't getting? And how can we help fill those gaps? So starting back last year around election day, we, um, we uh, did a, started a survey. It ran until the end of January. Some of you answered uh, the survey. And uh, we're really looking to find out from veterans in Weathersfield what are some of their issues. We also compared that to data from national surveys of veterans, as well as just talking to some of the veterans that we've encountered at coffees and other events. And we put together a needs assessment, which we just completed about two months ago. Uh, and that's the one that Mary was referring to. So um, we would be glad to share that needs assessment with you to kind of read for yourselves what we think will be about in the next uh, couple of years. The purpose of that was to help establish some broad goals that we would follow uh, as we start to put a little bit more meat on the bones of, of what we do for veterans. 
Uh, that's not to say that we haven't done anything. In the past year, uh, we held uh, one veteran's coffee. We, uh, with Chris's help and the town's help, we partnered with a group called Houses for Heroes. Am I getting that right? Homes for Heroes. Uh, to provide some uh, um, kind of emergency and, uh, and maintenance support, safety related maintenance support for two veterans homes. Uh, we did the survey, we've done a few other things. And of course, we're also responsible for uh, the committees that coordinate the Memorial Day Parade and the Veterans, uh, the Veterans Day ceremony. So it's a fairly uh, broad purview, uh, anything that we can do to assist veterans. Um, one thing we've tried to do, our meetings are short, they're only an hour long, so it's not always a chance to spend a lot of time talking. Uh, while sharing war stories is really important, uh, a part of veteran therapy, uh, this is not a place for war stories for the most part. And we try to, try to keep to our business as much as possible. We also find that uh, we've had one retreat per year uh, just to try to do a little bit of planning, and that's helped us augment our time in these meetings. Uh, and it, it may be getting time to have another kind of pull out for planning. I think one of the things that we've talked about doing in the future is maybe having some of the commission members that have certain portfolios. So as we look at our needs assessment and start moving forward with implementation, you know, maybe one or two people will be the newsletter team and a couple other people might be the veterans center team and so on. So we can kind of divide up some of the work and, uh, and move that forward. So uh, if that sounds interesting to you all, and, and I should have started by saying, Ryan Biggs and I are the co-chairs of the committee, uh, but we try to keep it pretty open. Helen actually has the hardest job because she's the secretary. She keeps all the minutes and has to actually write down <laughs> all the stuff we talk about. And our vice chair is Rick Newell, who is not here, but he is, uh, he, what is he, president of the DAV? And Correct. Rick, his exact title, but he's very involved yeah. in the, the DAV, has been for many years, and is also a Vietnam veteran, yeah, serves on the commission. And uh, up until just recently, uh, Dan Camilleri, former mayor uh, and uh, World War II veteran, was also a member of this commission. So he uh, recently, uh, I think, decided not to renew his membership on the commission. So uh, that, that's a, a little bit of our past, just for your benefit to know who we are. And if you are interested in joining the commission, kind of what you're getting into with us, uh, and we'd love to have you as part of it. And uh, we certainly could use more hands in, in doing some of the work ahead. Um, I'm gonna pause because I tend to talk too much. Any questions or comments about that? Is there a number of members that should be on the commission? Is there a set number or? That's a very good question. <laughs> yes, uh, we have seven members authorized by town council and two alternates. Okay. So we presently have um, five members and no alternates. So there's conveniently uh, an opportunity for four people to join the commission. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yay! Uh, why, don't you, why don't you talk about the process for getting on the commission? What what candidates would have to do or what we would have to do. No, I'm, I might not be the best one to do oh, that, but that's a good right. point, Frank. Ryan, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yes. Um, so the process is basically your name um, will be submitted to your selective uh, party, whether Democrat or Republican. Um, and within your party, um, you'll be selected and approved and whatnot, and that will go up to the town council, and the town council will um, usually approve. Um, we usually don't know who's Republican or Democrat. Um, that's how we've been operating. Um, we've been very good with that. Um, obviously, we did just hear that uh, there's three of us that were uh, approved in the same night, so I'm guessing you know, we're all Democrats, so the three that got reapproved. Um, but outside of that, it's really based on uh, your parties, um, your the RTC, DTC, and the screening committees, and, and they appoint those persons and submit it to the town council. So um, it's something from the conversation I had last week, it's something that can be done before a um, meeting is held. Uh, they can, you know, through an email, they can say, hey, all right, we want to appoint this person, appoint this person. Um, and it doesn't have to wait until the next month that the meeting comes. Um, but 
with COVID, everything is kind of moving as it's moving. Um, I don't know if you want to touch on that. Uh, for the part direct, if you know anything of how you guys operate um, outside of that, but I think I got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just I think you got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Just to note, the Republicans were also approved at the last town council meeting. Each correct. Each each party read their their candidates, and and they were all voted in. So. Uh, the, the parallel process. Mm -hmm. So just at the, and at the time we uh, the mayor did put out though um, that at the time because there's so many vacancies and so many people are willing to volunteer um, that he is willing to step out of party lines to appoint the necessary people in the necessary positions. So uh, I don't think that there will be an issue if we're a top heavy Republican or top heavy Democrat. Um, they're just willing to fulfill positions at this time. Mm -hmm. It would be really great uh, for the four of you. I know Helen Nye has uh, contact information for a couple of you. Yes. But it would, be, it would be great if those of you that haven't had contact with Helen uh, could just send your information to her and maybe we can forward that information through Mary as well up through the town manager's office just so he can ensure that the four names you know, maybe just uh, after, after tonight, if, if you're interested in being part of the commission, uh, confirm that with Helen as the secretary, she'll send that to Mary, uh, but also let your, your political party know, as Ryan was saying, so that the, there's some consistency in the names that are going forward. Does that seem reasonable? What if you're not in a party? If you're, uh, it, would, it would go the same way when you submit it to the town manager, they would uh, select as... Yeah. It might be easier to go slide in because you know you're not affiliated with anyone. Yeah. It might just take like <laughs> yeah. independent too. Yeah. I'm, I I put independent, so that's how I got nominated. So that's fine. Doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, that's good. And, and that's why. And I how suggest do we send that information over? I can um because I have your kind. Of, I can send you um Helen's email um and then you can email your your information to her. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. When you're yeah, when you're asking for information, are you just talking about your uh, party affiliation, or are you talking um, about no, just your, your name, uh, email? I think it's just name, email, and number. Oh, contact information. Just your contact information, correct? Okay. Right, right. And and of course, if you are interested and willing to serve, the uh, the terms are two year terms. Oh yeah. Uh, and they're yeah renewable. <laughs> it seems like <laughs> so. That's good. <laughs> Okay, well, we, we've taken a few things a little out of the agenda order, but it was an order that I hope you would agree makes sense. We wanted to address some things first. Um, so we've really talked about commission vacancies, which was under old business, uh, which is great. And uh, I don't think just looking down the agenda, we don't really have much to talk about Memorial Day because we just had it. And I don't think, Mary, you've started any planning for next year's Memorial Day, uh, have you? No, no, there was just a, a Lee Sikas, who you guys know, was the, who had been very involved with the Veterans Day and the Memorial Day uh, stuff. His uh, estate uh, settled and there was an additional donation made to the Memorial Day Parade for just under $500, an additional uh, $500. Yes, right. so, wow. wow. Yeah, so we were very, you know, he was, he thought a lot about and, and felt um, very strongly about veterans. So I just thought I would share that. That's really the only Memorial Day parade hmm. report. Okay. Thank you. That's great. Um, related to commission vacancies, uh, it would be nice, I think, um, if we did something to recognize uh, Dan Camilleri as the only member of the Veterans Commission who has, you know, served a full term and stepped away uh, after two years of service. So if anybody has any suggestions for that, be all open, uh, even if it's just a letter of appreciation, but uh, I, don't, I don't know Dan well enough to know what he might appreciate. Maybe his son, Tony, would be a good uh, person to, to talk with. I think that's appropriate, but I would like to see us follow with 
uh, and if and when we are all back in the public, uh, some type of a formal presentation, either uh, in front of the town council or something like that with Dan. Okay. But initially, I think that a round of appreciation would be nice. I'm not sure how it's drafted or who it would come from or how it would be even presented, but yeah, perhaps talking to his son would help um, clarify that. Yeah. Does anybody know Tony particularly well, Tony Camilleri? Uh, only my discussions with him uh, when I was asked if I was going to stay on and was a moot point anyways, but I, I had contact with him, so. Okay. Yeah, I have contact with him um, a little bit, so if it's something uh, that we need to contact him and kind of see what his father would like, I might definitely reach out to him. Yeah. Okay, that okay. sounds fine. Yeah. That'd be great. Because I think also, I don't know exactly what the reasons were that he stepped back. If it's health related, it may be hard to get him to come to something physically yeah. to yeah. honor him. So there yeah. might be a more appropriate way to do it. So uh, just find that out would be great, Ryan, I think. Okay. Um, the, the big agenda item and the reason we, we wanted to have an extra meeting in July, uh, well, honestly, we, we've done part of it already, I think, but was to look at implementation planning for things that we came up with in our needs assessment. And some of them are more feasible than others, and, and some of them might be a little hard given the, the COVID-19 situation. Uh, I'm just gonna very quickly recap uh, what some of those recommendations were so we can kind of refresh ourselves. Those of you that have the, the agenda packet from the previous meeting will have this with you. And as I said, we can, we can get this out to the four of you that are participating today. Um, so our recommendations included providing information to Wethersfield veterans about benefits, services, and opportunities for participation and support uh, using multiple forms of media to target specific veteran cohorts, um, such as using mail outs for the older veterans, um, email and social media for younger veterans, directing them to the town website. And then uh, one of the big ticket items that we ran into as we were doing the survey was just confusion over who is included in the term veteran. Uh, for some services and some uh, government organizations, it's for combat veterans. For others, it's anybody who has military service. And, and it varies from thing to thing. So helping to provide clarity around that particular question is a piece of information that would be helpful to people. Uh, the next big area was connecting Wethersfield veterans to town services and other resources. So we talked about increasing the town's capacity to connect veterans and their families with veteran services and benefits through the website, which we've started to do. Establishment of veterans resource centers at places like the library and the senior center and uh, better use of target, uh, of data, excuse me, to target referrals. The third item was to sponsor outreach activities to build veterans awareness of the Veterans Commission and available resources, such as veterans coffees, information sessions, and meeting with seniors groups on a regular basis. Uh, fourth area was to encourage increased veteran participation and engagement in town-sponsored veteran events and civic organizations. And these, particularly the Memorial Day Parade and Veterans Day Ceremony, we found that um, fewer than half of veterans really participated in those uh, events and they're, they're great opportunities. Uh, fifth, we wanted to foster youth involvement with veterans, uh, incorporate and support opportunities through the high school leadership club, um, high school commemorative and educational events and others to bring veterans together uh, and enlist youth as appropriate in helping to distribute information to veterans through these events. And just as an aside, um, the former town council liaison, Kenny Lesser, uh, has started a high school leadership club himself with some high school students. He has about 30 students back when they were at high school in person. And uh, he uh, approached us about the possibility of engaging the leadership club in helping to serve veterans, doing cleanup at their houses or things like that. So it's a pretty cool idea. We, I think we were pretty favorable. 
Um, and also there's a really great history teacher, John Sand, some of you may know, at the high school. And he's the one that organized the uh, 75th anniversary of the D-Day invasion uh, commemoration, uh, not this past, not this June, but the previous June, um, and involved a lot of veterans in that as well. So doing things like that, that bring young people into interaction with veterans so they can learn a little bit more about veterans and who they are, what they need. So we've already done some of those things and we'd, we'd like to do more of that. And then our, our last item was to continue to fill existing va vacancies on the Weathersfield Veterans Commission. And uh, I, I would feel very successful if we left tonight's meeting knowing that we had three or four very interested and committed former uh, service members who are veterans willing to serve and, and that would be great. So anyway, those are the six major items that we, we uh, said we wanted to work on. I'm going to pause and uh, let people comment or talk about any of the items they think we'd like to maybe start working on sooner rather than later. Um, I will say that obviously I think the most important thing is for us to get our group uh, fully together. Um, so if we can get those people interested on our commission, that would be great because that's uh, four, three or four more minds that can help us uh, making these decisions. Um, especially knowing that several of them are Navy, um, you know, just throw that out there. Um, uh oh. So, <laughs> uh oh. Um, but I, I think that I think that obviously I think that is the the, the top item um, because the more people we our commission, we can make sure we definitely have the quorum. We can lock in alternates, and um, we won't have to run into any meetings. Here. We won't have enough people. Other thoughts? Uh, I'll throw this in there. It sounds anecdotal, but I think there's a, a larger uh, perspective here. Uh, one of the th my background is uh, intelligence in the Army and then marketing in the civilian world. Kind of like same thing, just different markets, target markets. You know, one target market is different than the other. But uh, I was on the uh, Merrill Shoes website buying a pair of tactical boots, and I discovered that there, if you are a uh, active or retired military uh, or if you are Daddy. <laughs> if you're if you're uh, active or retired military uh, or just a veteran or if um, you are police fire EMT there's a website called ID me India Delta dot M -E, me and it's a discount uh, organization that is, works with a score of scores of different uh, uh, businesses. For example, with Merrill, I got a 20% discount off my tactical boots. And you signed up for it and they verify your prior service or your military or whatever it is. Uh, it's an easy process to go through. But then you get weekly updates. Uh, there are various companies that offer you significant discounts. I don't know, are you familiar with that, Jennifer? Or are you waiting on your head? No, no. It's called IDME, IndiaDelta.me. And uh, I am very familiar with it, actually. Okay, uh, it's great. I mean, you can use it or not use it. I get weekly emails, and that's the kind of thing that I discovered, and I'm sharing with you. But I think if we can share that with our veterans, that's a value added. And I'm all, I'm all about value added. And the more touch points we can make as a commission with our veterans community, the most value we add, in and over and above what we. We had uh, just for, for town functions, and town information for veterans. Mm -hmm. But I think that's that's something that most people don't know about because I've been retired for hmm, a long time, uh, 23 years. Uh, but I didn't know about until I bought some Merrill Boots. Um, something that either we in a newsletter or in an article that we might publish in the Weatherfield Post, uh, uh, that's the kind of thing that I think adds value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I also think that we should be more present on social media, mm -hmm. like especially given the fact that we would like to like, you know, engage a lot of the young, young people in the community to get, you know, to merge some of the veterans and, and the young people in the community. And I, I just think like, um, I didn't know about this coalition group at all until just like I know my daughter did the D-Day um, thing and she was 
you know, she, she, she actually escorted Ryan. And, you know, I didn't know all these things that goes on in the community. And it would be really great if we have like an amazing social media platform. Mm -hmm. I agree with that, Trisha. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's to a great degree why we're trying to expand the committee to reach platforms that some of us may not be as familiar with as others. So, right. yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and one thing, you know, Mary and Chris, you, you can kind of help keep us on the right side of, of municipal law guidelines, whatever. I know in the past, sometimes we've been uh, steered away from putting anything that wasn't a government service on the website or other things. So as we go down the road with this, because I think we really want to do more like this that gets information out to people, just helping us make sure that we're doing it in a way that reflects well on the town of Wethersfield and doesn't get Gary Evans, you know, all upset if we <laughs> put something out there. <laughs> we're in trouble. Does that sound good? I'm going to try to talk between my dog barking. Okay. Um, so I apologize. Uh, the, the town is getting with the times in terms of Facebook pages. So there are some town Facebook pages. Most of them do have to do with apartments, but I think there are some that might be uh, <laughs> functions of town instead of apartments. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, but uh, I think you guys are on the website. So in terms of social media, I think the town is getting it. I do think it would have to kind of be through the, the process going with the town and making sure that it's all cool. Um, like our department mm -hmm. just kind of launched a, a pretty successful so, uh, Facebook page, even though Facebook is like down and Instagram is up. But um, it's, you know, we're kind of behind the times, but it, in, especially in these term, times of COVID, we're getting a lot of information out just by using the Facebook page. Uh, so I, I agree with Trisha and it, I think it's a great thing and I would certainly be willing to help from the towns and uh, if you guys kind of come up with a plan that you wanted to do, I'd, I'd certainly kind of be your go-between to make sure that everything is cool with the town. Good, good, good. Thank you, Mary. Um, th there's two sort of big topics that we had talked about quite a bit, both at our retreats and at past meetings. One was the idea of creating a paper newsletter that was mailed out. And, and Mary has confirmed that Fauna in the assessor's department would give us access to the 1300 mailing addresses she has for veterans, which is most of the Wethersfield veterans uh, who file for tax relief. Um, and the other piece was the possibility of setting up something at like the library and the uh, senior center that we we call it a, a veterans resource center. Uh, and it might just be a place where there's a bulletin board and information on the wall. Some towns actually have a veterans resource center where they have a person there once in a while or, or you know, maybe a certain day of the week, there's somebody there to answer questions or uh, they have coffee, regularly scheduled coffees uh, at this uh, senior center where veterans can know they can just show up and hang out with other veterans. And you, you kind of soft sell some of the information. You can share information like things Frank is talking about, uh, you know, with people at a, at a place like that. So it's not one strategy that's going to get us to all the veterans because different veterans have different ways they like to get information. And paper is still very effective with the older veterans. And uh, demographically speaking, Facebook is probably not uh, out of line with our demographic, right? Uh, Facebook is that, uh, what are they, I think the marketing people, Frank, you would say that Facebook demographic is predominantly women between 35 and 55, if I'm not mistaken, maybe a little higher now. Yeah, those are good brothers. Yeah, those are good brothers. And, uh, you know, not just women, but that more women than men apparently were on Facebook. Um, but that's a good conduit for us. So uh, anyway, 
So I'm kind of wondering, are we interested in pursuing that, uh, the newsletter strategy? And if so, somebody want to kind of lead a uh, team of thinking about what that would look like, how we put that together, what types of things would be included. We have no budget for it, so it would be photocopied on the Parks and Rec photocopier and mailed out with donations from <laughs> us or our fundraisers, which is I, one of our agenda items. I, I, we, we talked about fundraisers the last week, and I committed to uh, yeah. To climbing the pump with a hundred dollar donation because why not? I mean, really, come on. You know? I've, right. certainly, I've certainly gotten an awful lot in my retirement for the military. Sure, that. Um, um, uh, go ahead, Frank. Uh, no, no, that's okay. no. uh, oh. I, certainly, I, I certainly wouldn't mind uh, either chairing or just uh, being a part of that committee. It, it's uh, I mean, marketing is my background. Um, I can I can see a dovetailing of what we put out in paper, being on an Instagram account. Or you know, I'm not big I'm not a big face guy, a Facebook guy. I don't go on Facebook, but I do like Instagram a lot. Uh, I find it less uh, uh, intrusive and uh, not as uh, sometimes mean spirited as Facebook. But I certainly participate in that. Uh, Paper form. I will be happy to um I will be happy to help by um giving like resources and stuff that I I have came across and I have used like websites and legitimate um stuff that I could like help um give information to. So I you could I will be happy to help. Okay, good. So, so, so it sounds like Frank being the marketing and the intelligence guy wants to lead this off. Um, it seemed like he offered himself. That's just what I got out of it. <laughs> but uh Commander Drake this is help. gonna help hey, him. I'll be yeah. right hey, I have I, no problem uh assisting you with it, but if you want to lead it, um I will be right there and, and well, I, Yeah I'm a, I I'm on the regular I'm on Instagram so I can help you out with it if you need. Okay. Yeah I seem to have some free time on my hands. Okay. So just to be clear Frank, are you volunteering to lead the social media effort or the newsletter effort or both? The hard copy part of the effort, but with support from somebody with social social media. I end, I use Instagram. I don't know how to effectively use it in a, in a larger uh, capacity. So if someone- oh. I could help you with that, Frank. That was it's the Trish. I could help you with that. That was the A answer, Trish. We like A answers. We don't like okay. <laughs> so Frank, I'm I'm kind of hearing you're really more more the social media. You're not you're not the print newsletter guy then. Is that I, I can be, include print in it, I will be the overall coordinator of it. Working with Trish or anybody else who wants to add their expertise. Okay. Well the, the newsletter is gonna take some concerted effort on the part of, you know, a couple people to yeah. focus on that. Yeah. Um, so I, I just wanna make sure I know who's who's volunteering to do that. And I, I think I could see the newsletter people working very closely with Mary and Chris because they're the conduit for a lot of the information that will go out uh, yeah. in the newsletter and uh, possibly even Fauna's office when we put the tax relief information out and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, we, we, I mean, we call it a newsletter. We really have no concept yet of how long it would be uh, uh, for printing purposes, obviously, we want to do two sides because it's cheaper to mail that out than one. Uh, yeah, so Demetri and I, uh, uh, you, you staple it in the upper corner. Is it just a fold over? Right, uh, just right. the organizational piece, let alone the content. That That's where we want a couple of people who will focus just on figuring that out. Correct. Correct. All those things you just mentioned need to be determined with recommendations coming back to this group. So it's okay. not just go off and do right. stuff and we don't, it's not a fire and forget mission. All of these things are go off, figure it out, bring it back to the group, run yeah. it through the group and then implement. So, yeah. Yeah. so we're not. I would want more than just uh, Trish and I, I'd want some additional, uh, uh, you know, brain picking on this with some others. Okay. Yeah. I would love to help you and Trish. I would like, I'd love to have I can help you. too, Frank. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're working. Alrighty. Okay. 
Good. Okay. So that was Sandra and who was the other person? Me, Helen. Helen. Okay, great. Helen. We have awesome. a fire. We have a fire team. Excellent. Frank, thank you. That's great. Cool. That's for you. And then, uh, the other big thing was was kind of a veterans, as we said, a veterans center. And that's something we want to maybe think through a little bit. I'm thinking also with Mary and Chris. Uh, Mary used to run the Pitkin Center and so has a lot of knowledge of what goes on over there, what's feasible. Um, and we have, I think, good relationship with the library uh, as well. It's going to be hard to do it to implement it while everything's closed, but we can at least start the conversations with people. So uh, uh, I don't know if anybody's interested in kind of tackling that. I'm, I'm happy to work on that yeah. piece as well. Yeah, I'd love to help out with that. Um, Cause I think the center um, and Mary, correct me if I'm wrong, is open to having um, <laughs> scheduled meetings per se or, or um, things of that nature. Um, so I, I feel like that would be a perfect place if we wanted to do a coffee. Um, we can actually hold it at one of our places at the center, which is more space, not like um, the place we did, uh, the Dunkin' Donuts we did on Silas Dean that day, but we'd have a lot more space. We could bring the coffee in, um, have the veterans meet, um, and that could be like, a, you know, build it into like a monthly meeting space for the veterans to come and have coffee and talk with each other. Amy Miller, the senior center coordinator, I'm sure would be more than happy to work uh, with you. It, you know, and again, I, we don't want to think of se veterans as only seniors, but mm -hmm. it, depending on what time you're looking at having this meeting, if you're looking at a daytime, you're like, likely to get more of the older. Um, but between uh, Natalie Morrison has my old job at the community center uh, for you know, booking just uh, any kind of meetings using any of the meeting spaces or Amy Miller, the senior center coordinator to look at, because she's worked with Rick to had the DAV did a lunch and learn for them. Um, she does a lot of that sort of programming and she's great at getting the word out about those programs as well. So, um, and, and Chris is her coworker. So there you go, Chris Taylor. Great. No, that's excellent. And, and and the groups will need to come back together to share because, you know, in order for Frank, your communications team to have content, that's going to come from, you know, the staff and the program side too. So hosting coffees would get put into the newsletter and the social media feed and stuff like that. So just to wrap up, I'm looking at the time. I don't want to take people over. Um, we, we talked about having a uh, communications team headed up by Frank that would consist of uh, Ryan would help with that, Tricia, Sandra, and Helen, and uh, anybody else that wants to help out with that. Um, and then kind of a veterans center team, maybe Ryan and Doug and anybody else that wants to help with that. I think we could get, um, we, we might most likely might get Rick in on that since he already knows how to operate in those spaces. Yeah, that'd be great. And he has some good content to share as well. Um, and then just a, a reminder for the four of you, Jennifer, Sandra, uh, Tricia, and Tegan, uh, thank you again for joining us tonight. If you think this is something you'd like to be part of, uh, we welcome that. There is a formal process to get you onto the commission uh, officially. So if you can make sure that Helen Nye gets your contact information and an affirmative, if you do want to be part of it. Um, if you don't want to be on the commission, but would just like to help out uh, with some of the things we've talked about, we'd still love to have you as volunteers. Uh, that's how we uh, multiply our combat power. So uh, we're, we're happy to have you. And I'm talking to a whole bunch of nurses, so I'm not sure that's appropriate to say that. And Navy, <laughs> Navy people, I don't do Navy people know what combat power is? I don't know. Anyway. Um, we are we'll, do. We do. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, anyway, so those are kind of the three big things we're working on. It's really exciting to hear the talk about social media and newsletter. Uh, so thank you, Frank, for, for leading that effort. Um, Ryan's going to follow up with Tony. Camilleri, so we can figure out a good uh, a good way to say thank you to Dan for his service, and then uh, 
We have just a couple of quick minutes. Any board member comments before we adjourn? Uh, I would just like to. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You sure? I, I refer to the junior officer. Okay. <laughs> that's all right. Um, I'm a Navy officer, but that's the difference. Um, so I just want to thank our uh, our visitors. Um, you know, Tegan, thank you. Uh, Trish, I, I reached out to you guys. You guys showed up. Appreciate it. Um, uh, Sandra, thank you. Jennifer, thank you. Um, Jennifer, your name came across, so I, I'm going to be seeing you soon, too, because I'm on the committee with Doug as well. So oh, okay. I think we'll see each other next week. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, thank you all for coming out, to, or not coming out tonight, but thank you for logging in tonight <laughs> and joining us. Uh, for this hour of your time. Appreciate it. Uh, uh, next meeting, uh, Doug? Yeah, I think our next meeting is is technically in September. Okay. Uh, we, we took a little bit of time yeah. from our summer by doing this. However, yeah. uh, Frank, that's a great point. Feel free to convene your volunteers anytime that you would like to get them together. Uh, you know, offline to start doing some initial planning and Ryan and I should probably do the same thing and and talk with people at the senior center and the library about what might be feasible there so okay. that when we come back in September we actually have some information to share uh, and, and some planning done. Okay, uh, is it Sandra? Is that you? Sandra? Is that correct? Okay, and, and Tricia? Uh, yes, it is. My, my, my email address is um, on the do they have a list of the members, uh, Doug? No, let's let's first get them to send their information to uh, Helen. Helen, right. if you can share everybody's email addresses with the rest of us, yeah. and then Great. Mary, will, Mary will update our roster and, and we'll get some information out to everybody. Okay. I, I only have um, Jennifer and Sandra though. I don't have Trisha's email or Tegan's. I wanna contact you afterward. I'm gonna all right, all right, Ryan, you'll, okay, perfect. Right, yeah. Okay. All right, and uh, you know, it will. Once I have your information, we'll start to put together a plan. So, I and, love it. You know, I think like by, by September uh, meeting, we should have uh, something to be able to present to the entire commission uh, for their review and uh, uh, consideration and uh, amendment. Cool. That sounds great. And our next right. meeting is scheduled for September 9th. Okay. September 9th. Thank you, Mary. All right. And Chris, we, we didn't get a chance to talk about your update, but um, we'll, we'll maybe get that in September. And if you want to add that to your email that you'll be sending out, that'd be great too. Chris is on mute. Okay. <laughs> no worries. Thank you, Thank you very much. I, I will get that information as soon as possible. Awesome. Uh, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. I already did this. Second. Second. I'll second. <laughs> All in favor of adjourning. Aye. There's only four of us to say aye. 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 Thank you very much. We are officially adjourned. Thank you all, everybody. Thank uh, you. Have a wonderful summer, and we'll see you in September. Super. Okay. Or sooner. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.